So let's take the uh, Taeyun Q12 apart and see what's inside. To take it apart, I need a half inch nut driver, number one Phillips, and this is a T7 uh, Torx. So let's start with the Phillips, it's on the back side, so this is only one uh, screw on the back side. Let's take the knobs off. Let's remove the uh, bolt holding on the output jacks. And let's make sure the washer's get in there too. And now we need to take off these Torx nuts, Torx screws on the uh, uh, input jacks. And now the unit comes apart and there's the inside. Let's take a look inside the Taeyun Q12. I have the uh, top set on it, so just for reference, you can remember what uh, all these level controls and and where everything is. So let's take it off. And the first thing to notice is it's a fairly dense surface mount circuit board, but uh, it looks uh, neatly laid out. All the parts are well soldered. Uh, these connectors are incredibly nice looking for what you pay for this thing. These little chips all over the place are your Jelly Bean dual bipolar op amps. I'll show you the spec sheet for those. These three parts over here are uh, switching voltage converters. I assume one's to generate the 48 volts and a couple are probably the supplies for the op amps. This chip here is the one that does all the magic. It takes the audio levels and converts it to digital and then to USB and the digital in from the computer and back to audio. Now, uh, the uh, company saw fit to uh, laser the part number off of that. But two minutes on Google, I found what it was. It was not hard to find. And I'll show you the spec sheet for that one as well. Overall, I'd say this thing is really well put together, especially for the price. I have no issues with the assembly. I mean, they've used inexpensive parts, but it's a very low cost unit. I mean, uh, the assembly, mechanical design, it's good. So here's a side view of the PCB board, board removed from the, uh, the Taeyun. And you can see here, we have these two big capacitors. They're 50 volt rated. I assume they're for the phantom power that doesn't work very well. Here's the output jacks, the combination input jacks, um, the, you know, the four potentiometers. These two are stereo C6 leads, and these are mono with four leads. All the LEDs, the LEDs are on these spacers with long leads, um, and these spacers keep uh, control the height uh, that the LEDs sit up when they're soldered into place. This is the back side of the PCB, and this is a two-sided PCB. And looking around, you can see that uh, wherever there's not traces, there's a ground or power plane. And uh, it's not obvious to uh, at first, but if you look here, this is the center of a star ground right here. Um, now, here's the uh, top side of the PCB, and look at how dense the parts are on this thing. Um, the fact that they managed to get all these parts, get this thing working, and do this with a two-sided PCB, this is an impressive layout job. Um, I've done PCB layouts, and it's really hard to get parts this dense uh, with a two-sided design. I typically use at least a four-layer board when I try and do anything this dense. Um, I'm just not that good of a PCB layer layout person. I don't do it enough. Anyway, so here's another view 
of the the part of the board and you can see here's the uh op amps here's some power converters over here um the jacks uh, here's a cl close up near the two stereo output jacks showing three op amps one of the this this op amp here since it's right next to the headphone jack is most likely the headphone amplifier they're just using an op amp driving the headphone amp directly they're not using a special chip um here's some uh more uh, uh parts near these are transistors i assume these are to drive the leds this is a zener diode here op amps Here's another view. Again, the power converters, op amps, resistors, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors. Uh, the quality of the components is seems uh, seems good for the price you pay for this. And I mean, the pots are smooth, but they feel good. Um, it's very impressive, and you can see the. Uh, that the uh, part values are uh, silk screened onto the PCB board next uh, in most places. So here's the PCB board next to the uh, assembled unit. So you can see uh, uh, if it essentially inside the case. Now, if we look here, here's the PCB board next to the bottom part of the case. And these four screw holes here are what uh, get screwed onto the case at, the, at these four points. Now, these two screw holes here were engineered into the case, but are not used. If you look this one, there's actually no screw hole in the board for it. And this one over here, there's a screw hole on the PCB, but they decided not to use that screw, I guess, to save the, uh, the fraction of a cent the screw costs. This is the top of the case. Um, you can see here, uh, I've circled all the part points where the top of the case mounts to the bottom part. The top part of the, the upper part, uh, these mount directly to the connectors. So they're held in place with the connectors being soldered to the PCB board. But by screwing, but by mounting the connectors uh, all to this uh, hard plastic. It adds some mechanical stability to the top side of the connectors, uh, which makes them more stable, even though so that the uh, soldered part on the back side will hold up fairly well. It's actually a clever design. Over here are the two 3.5 millimeter connectors. This is the mic input, the headphone output. And over here, and you can see that the uh, molding is tapered. So when you put this top on, it self aligns. Again, the switches, four switches, here's where they go. And again, you can see those holes are tapered again so that the, so self, the top part self aligns when you put it in, down to assemble it. And here's where the, all the LEDs go through. And these LEDs are on long leads, and these could get bent a little bit. So you can see here that these taper holes are a little steeper or something, but these will help self-align align those LEDs to the spots on, on the front panel, even if they're, you know, slightly bent off or not perfectly uh, in place. So here's the front and the back together, so you can just see where they... Uh, how it looks without the PCB in there. Now here's a close-up of the power supply chips. Now here's a the uh, spec sheet for the power supply chips, but this is actually a very old old design, and almost every manufacturer makes a a uh, not every manufacturer, but there's many many manufacturers that make versions of this chip. The original one is this Motorola chip that's from the late 1970s or early 1980s. It's a bipolar chip. Now I looked on uh, Alibaba, and you can buy these uh, from China for 16 cents a piece. That's to uh, foreign customers. I bet you they're well under. They're probably five or six cents to the manufacturer. So now we're looking at a close-up of a couple of the op amps here. 
So here's the op amp spec sheet. Uh, this uh, company that uh, makes this is based in Taiwan, but all their manufacturing and sales are in mainland China. And it's a it's a simple uh, bipolar op amp, but it's fairly not you know simple uh, simple design. It's a, a process that probably dates from the 1980s. Um, and it, this one is a copy of the JRC op amp. And again, it's probably an old JRC design. This is a page out of a 2012 update of the spec sheet, but I'm sure the design's from the 1980s, 1990s, the latest. And you can see here, in small quantities to foreign customers, these op amps are 10 cents each. So um, they, they're probably paying th two or three cents each for these when they put this thing together. Now here's the uh, the uh, USB ADC or you know analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter chip that does all the uh, magic converting the audio signals into digital and back and forth. And you can see that they've lasered off the portion of the chip that had the part number on it, so you can't tell what it is. Now, I said earlier in the video that I found it, but it turns out I didn't. I found something similar, but it wasn't the exact chip. When I look closer, um, I've not been able to find the exact chip. This is a 48-pin package. You can see here it's got a 24 megahertz crystal next to it. The one side of the crystal hooks to pin 15. So those are hints to finding the right uh, spec sheet for this, and I haven't been able to do that. It may be that the spec sheet I need is in Chinese, and I just don't don't do Chinese and can't search the web, the Chinese web to find it. Anyway, here's an older uh, TI part. This was originally a Burr Brown part, which is an analog uh, company that uh, Burr Brown bought. And this essentially has all the functionality of the chip that's in the Taehyun. And so the, the part may be a somewhat of a copy of that. But you can see here it doesn't have as many pins. It's not in the right case. But the specs are all very similar to the Taehyun. Now here's a CM Media part. And I think this is the company that makes most of the... Uh, the uh, USB audio interface chips in almost every uh, um, you know USB audio interface you can buy nowadays. The high-end ones, the low-end ones, I think almost all of them come from this company or copies of what this company makes. Um, I had a hard time getting uh, the... Uh, the spec sheets from this uh, their website in Taiwan it was uh, the connectivity was very slow and it timed out and when I did see stuff not they didn't have spec sheets available for all their parts this part is similar to what's in there but it's not the part because this one is crystalless and that one has a crystal but you can see it's the same 48 pin package So this is a uh, similar part to the CM Media part I found on Alibaba. The CM108 is a, uh, a CM Media part number, but my guess is this is a Chinese copy of the CM Media part. It sells for $0.10 cents a piece in quantities greater than 10 so it's probably even less than that in China for the, the quantities Taeyun is buying. It's not the exact part, but it's similar. And I suspect the part they're getting from the same manufacturer. I don't know for sure because I don't read or speak Chinese and can't do a very good search of the Chinese websites. Anyway, what did we learn from the Taeyun Q12 teardown? We learned it's built with a two-sided PCB. It's a very well-engineered compact layout, and all the in-between spaces on both sides are filled with ground or power. It's got three types of low-cost ICs, seven dual op amps, three bipolar switching regulators, and one USB to ADC and DAC interface of unknown origin. The quality of the components seems excellent. Uh, 
considering the price of this unit. Uh, the case is very well engineered and the mechanical assembly well thought out. There's no shielding from the case, but it's designed for easy assembly with a minimum number of fasteners. It's flawed, but still useful. If you saw my uh, review in the, my previous video, which I recommend you see if you haven't, you can see that it needs another 20 dB gain. The phantom power is essentially useless, and uh, but it's useful. I'm using it to record the video for the viewport view chart portion of this video with my Electrovoice 664A microphone. Anyway, I'm guessing the total manufacturing cost for this unit is probably under $5. It would have to be for them to be able to sell it uh, for the $15, $15, $16 price with shipping. Um, it's a flawed design, but very well engineered unit considering the price they're selling it for. Um, it's a, a very uh, interesting piece of engineering. And it is a useful, useful tool. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please consider subscribing and hitting the uh, all notification bell. So when I post a new video, you'll be able to be notified. Thank you for watching.